You are going to love this video. I got a chance to talk with two buddies of mine, Sierra Madro, Phil Gerbashak, who are geniuses in technology, not just in using it, but in how you can apply it in practical living using tools like LinkedIn Video and how that's available for you right now. How to use tools with the iPad and make it really come alive, turning handwritten text into real text. And I talk about some things like Bitcoin and what's happening with that, as well as Steam it and how you can start making money in your content. And we just had a great time producing that. Bunches of ideas. Join us for this video with hot tech tips. to tell you about some hot technologies that you're going to be able to use and some ways that you can get a lot done using technology to make money, to save money, and to just have more fun than the law will allow. But then the law is different in various locales. So we're going to go for it. And joining me, we have two geniuses, two people who are my dear friends, but also they're brilliant in technology. Joining us uh, from Portland, Oregon, her office is there, Sierra Madro, who's going to talk to us about all kinds of wonderful things. Sierra, how are you doing today? Doing great, Terry. Glad to have you with us here. And then we'll slide down to Tampa, Florida, where we have the lovely and charming Phil Gerbachak joining us right now. Phil, how in the world are you today? I am very warm and very wonderful. Thanks, Terry. It's uh, gorgeous here in Tampa. It's about 93 degrees outside. So A it's awesome. day in Tampa. <laughs> hey, I'm right. beating you yeah, both. Something like it's that. I'm beating you both today. It's 105 in Portland today. That is wow. amazing. 105. <laughs> Whereas, like I was telling Sierra before, when it said 105, we call that Wednesday here in Orlando. And so it's just uh, <laughs> the, the way things work. <laughs> so uh, we, we're going to cover a lot, but uh, we're coming to you live now on Facebook, which is also called Facebook Live for some funny reason. And what we're going to do is talk to you about some tips. We've got each of us here with uh, three marvelous little money saving, money making, time saving, and just fun applications and other kinds of technologies that we want to share. And I've got three I want to uh, share with you, a couple that are going to show you how to make money and wait, one that's going to show you how billions, literally with a B, billions of dollars were made yesterday. And you're going to learn how that can happen and how you can get a part of that. But before we get into all of that, we're going to start with Ladies First, which comes uh, the way it works here. Ladies First, Sierra, we're going to swing up to you there in chilly uh, Portland, Oregon, with a temperature of 105 <laughs> right now. And tell us about yeah. the apps that you have and what you're using right now, what you want to share with us. Oh, sure. So first off, you can tell it's hot if I've actually put my hair up. So that's that's like a weather barometer right there. Uh, yes, I changed my hair, too. I put it up like that. Do you like the way I have it up there, Dara? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great style for you, Terry. Good. Thank you. Bill, does it meet with your approval as well? Uh, well, you know, your ears are a little long, but the hair is perfect. Oh, the hair is perfect. Okay, that's it. The ears are a little long. All right. <laughs> Well, uh, enough about Terry oh. jabbering away. I'm going to call, shut myself up. And Sierra, I'm going to let you talk. <laughs> so I was just recently at a conference with the both of you, the National Speakers Association Influence Conference. And while I was there, I was taking notes as an attendee in all of the sessions. And I had a lot of people who are really interested in how I was taking notes because I was using my iPad Pro with the iPad Pencil. And the pencil is a fantastic handwritten note taking device. So this actually allows me when I'm writing, I can rest my hand on the screen, write just like I would on a piece of paper. And there's no lag, there's no uh, difference really, writing here versus writing on a piece of paper. Now that requires some tools to go along with it because as awesome as the pencil is, is just a pencil. You got to have the paper. And the app that I recommend for that is called Nebo, N-E-B-O. And Nebo is offered by a company called MyScript. Now, the fun thing about Nebo, and you can see there my 
nice handwritten notes from the USB podcaster breakfast. Uh, and uh, one of the things about Nebo is that it stores your handwriting, but in the background, it is also converting all of that to text for mm -hmm. easy searching and easy recognition. The yeah. other thing that I can do is, and we'll find out if this will actually work uh, on screen here, I can double tap on the text and it converts to the text right there so that I can look at it. And then if I tap on it again, it can make it in, in different fonts and I can go back to having that back in my handwriting as well if I prefer it that way. Sierra, that is that very means, nice. Let me ask you this, can yeah, you do that makes it in it really languages as well? If you write in, um, uh, say, uh, you know, Spanish or Russian, I say those because I'm studying them, but uh, if you write in those languages, seriously, would it convert over to uh, that language? Yes. Um, they have language support for, I've forgotten exactly how many, but something like 10 or 12 languages. I, You'd have to check for the specific languages that you're interested in, but they do have multiple language support available. So this application for MyScript works really well, on, particularly if you're taking notes like in a meeting, and then you want to share the nicely typed notes with the rest of the meeting participants later. You can write all of your notes out very quickly and then convert them to text, do any cleanup that you might need, and then share directly. The other thing that it does is it has some really nice features. If you do something like um, write in a heading and then you underline it so that you know that that's you know, an important section heading or something, mm -hmm. it actually does those as styles. And it will make that like an H1, heading one style. So you can uh, actually format the typed text while you're writing it. Very it nice. Bullet points, wow. things like that. It's got some really, really snazzy features. That is the, the app's called Nebo, N-E-B-O, and it's by a company called MyScript. Nebo by MyScript. Is there a charge for that? Um, I think there is a charge. I've had it for so long I've forgotten. But yeah, okay. um, it's it's not uh, not a particularly expensive application if it is, okay. uh, if there is a charge. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for sharing that. I like that. And I pick up one of those uh, iPads, particularly one of the new ones that I'm looking at and kind of lusting over right now. I'm kind of like going, <laughs> yeah, I want to get that. Yeah. So I'm thinking They're about it. They're worth it. it. <laughs> good. They are so well, worth it. Excellent. Well, Phil, we're going to swing down to you there for some hot technology tips, ideas, apps, whatever you want to share with us. What you got for us today? Sure. Well, I typically like to focus on apps that can, to your point, make money for you. Not that taking notes can't because you have to definitely take notes. And I love that app, Sierra. I'm definitely going to check out Nebo. That's really cool. Um, so my app actually is just a a change to an app, and that is LinkedIn Mobile for not everybody, but many people now offers LinkedIn Video. And they are calling it LinkedIn Live, or I've seen people say that it's not LinkedIn Live. It doesn't broadcast live, but it does allow you to natively record a video or upload a video directly to the LinkedIn platform. It's a very, very rudimentary um, Video video tool, it basically just uploads or records and upload, record and upload. And it takes a little bit to do that. Um, but that's a big step forward because before you had to link off to YouTube or you had to drive them off the platform. Now, knowing LinkedIn, this isn't the last move that they've made in the space. This is just the first move. And know that Microsoft owns LinkedIn. They bought them last year, $26 billion. And they're already attributing revenue to LinkedIn. Positive where earnings result good, which tells me they're going to keep investing in the platform. And LinkedIn, and Microsoft is committed to not just killing LinkedIn, right? So that's a really good sign for all of us. So if you're thinking, hey, I'm a speaker and I want to do more video, but doggone it, I worry that somebody else is going to pre-roll my video and put their ad at the beginning of mine thus ruining the effectiveness of mine. Or they're going to put a post-roll video, and it's just going to keep rolling through. Or, you know, maybe afterwards it comes up and it has some suggested videos of things that I don't approve of. Now you have a tool to go video directly on the platform, and the key to that is a couple things. Think about location. Where the heck are you? This is a boring location. This is just a green screen. Go outside. 
Record your video there. Do it at a speaking engagement. Do it at a client site. Do it on a beach. Do it somewhere, but do it on location. Secondly, make sure your sound is great. Terry and Sierra, I think you saw this too about this awesome new um, US or non uh, Bluetooth completely cordless lavalier mic, which is fantastic coming soon called a Hey Mic. We're, I'm excited about that. I can't wait to see that. So make sure your sound is good. If you need to get Bluetooth regular, you know, speakers or whatever, but the lab one is coming right now. There isn't one. They're all in ear. And then third and most importantly is always have a call to action at the end. Think about what you want people to do. Drive them there. So use the LinkedIn video tool. If you're looking to test it out, if you're looking for someone who's using it, I've used it a couple times, just connect with me on LinkedIn, Phil Gerbishak, and I'll be happy to help you with that and show you what that's like and, and show off some video. I'm going to try to do about one of those a week just to test out the platform for you. Excellent. Phil, that is marvelous. I really appreciate you sharing that. And people, if you are using uh, LinkedIn at all, Phil is a powerful resource on that. He's got a whole lot of material that he shares with you on his site and uh, he talks with it. He helps people coaching. So you could get him as a coach might be some of the smartest money you've ever spent getting him to help you on LinkedIn, working with him on that. So Phil, thank you. And by the way, we're not going to let you get away yet. Just tell us even right now, how can people get in touch with you, Phil? Yeah, well, you know, if you're going to go to LinkedIn, just find me. It's Gerbyshak, G-E-R-B-Y-S-H-A-K, Phil Gerbyshak, or go to my company website, Vengresso, V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O dot com. And lot, we, we have three podcasts that we put up and three calls a week, so we can help you there. Very good. Thank you. And Sierra, also, while you're here, uh, tell us how can people get in touch with you if they want more information on the consulting, the coaching that you do, and also you do a lot of speaking for organizations. How can they reach you? Yes. So uh, there's two good ways to find me right now. One is my uh, regular website, sierramadro.com. And the other is through the Tech Happy Hour, which I've started up about a month ago. And the Tech Happy Hour is giving short little tips on a variety of topics. Um, interesting, Phil, one of the things that might be appropriate for people is today's Tech Happy Hour is around video and how to do very simple video at in the home office without a whole lot of equipment that still looks and sounds good. So you might wanna, uh, if you're interested in getting some more information about how do I actually do this video, then uh, check out the Tech Happy Hour and I'll have uh, a video on video later today. I like it. Thank you. Well, both of you have some great ideas and we've also got two more tips for you. But uh, what I'm going to do is share a tip that I've got right now, a tool that I discovered that uh, got my attention at first. And I thought, yeah, I don't need that and found out, whoa, it can really help. One of the things that many of us like to do, and Phil Gerbyshack and I put together a whole um, broadcast on how to use uh, technology for listening on your podcast so you can listen faster. When you listen to a podcast at 1x speed, at the regular speed, a 60-minute podcast would take 60 minutes. However, if you turn it up to, say, 1.5, it's talking a little bit faster. Yes, you get the advantage of getting through it a little bit faster. I think whatever would be like maybe four, uh, 45 minutes or something, whatever that might be. But uh, even more importantly, your brain will retain it more. Because if someone's talking to you, and if I talk to you for 60 minutes, and I'm talking at this speed like this for a long time, it's going to get real boring and your mind is going to go elsewhere. It's going to be bouncing around. Whereas if I talk like this and you're still understanding me, you have to kind of lean in and listen to what is he saying? I understand it, but I've got to pay attention more now. You're going to retain more. So the idea of increasing the speed sounds good. Well, I heard about an app that gives the ability to do that. And I thought, okay, big deal. We can do that on our podcast. I can pick it one, five, one, two, but then. I found out it does even more than that. There's a video. I wish I could share this with you right now. We're using Blue Jeans, and Blue Jeans is a great little tool. Uh, it gives you the ability to do a lot, uh, but we can't share what's on the screen, which is something that I really like to do. But I'm going to share it with you the old-fashioned way, just holding it up here like this. This one is called Right Speed. That's R I G H T S P E E D. Right Speed, as one word. 
And the nice thing about it, it gives you the ability to uh, connect uh, MP3s. So I loaded a bunch of MP3s, many that I uh, got from a conference I went to. I went to a conference, I was MC there, and as part of the deal, they gave me all the audio recordings. So I went through and uh, got those that I thought were the best and listen to them. And I can listen to them at adjustable speed. But here's the real advantage. Not only can I listen to the uh, uh, the play that's here, the uh, the videos that are there, but you know, you would just press the, the uh, play key here and do it. But what I can do is I can adjust the speed up to a speed of 10x. So 10x, if you ever want to try that, wow, that's a lot. Most of the audios I found, you wouldn't want to. But the real advantage is right below here. It says automatic speed ramping. What in the world is that? Automatic speed ramping says, okay, start at it where you're comfortable with this audio, with this speaker right now. So for some, it might be, I mean, if somebody's from uh, another country, often I turn it down a little bit slower because there's a different accent. Or if it's someone who's talking very rapidly in the recording, it might not be as fast. But you could set it at, say, 1.5. And then when you do the automatic speed ramping, what it does is like every minute or two minutes, it increases by a factor of 0.1. So that that's not much of a stretch, but by going to point one, then it goes to point, you know, two X higher. You're gradually listening faster and faster, and it's training your brain to listen more carefully and more closely. I'm finding that now, having listened to that, when I go back and listen to my regular podcast, I'm now regularly listening to them at two X and higher. It has helped me train my brain to process more information. So, for instance, there's a uh, the Crypto Show is one of my favorite podcasts out in Austin, Texas, and they usually go for two hours. It's a radio show for two hours. And so two hours, that's a lot. But if I can bring that down to 2x speed, it's one hour or a little bit over 2x often so I can get it down even more. Bottom line is you can learn more and literally can learn faster. So the uh, app is called Right Speed. I think it costs $2.99. So not a lot, but it is something. And I'm finding something, Sierra, what you talked about when we were talking about the, the app that you have to pay for. I don't know. I'm finding often when something is free, that's good. But I'm finding you often get better quality when you pay for something. Plus, when you pay for Amen. it, you're, you're then in a position where you can say, hey, 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 I paid for this. Now you owe me a little bit more, even if it's two dollars and ninety nine cents. But I got to tell you, I really like that. So look into right speed. Great little tool for listening to audio of all kind on your portable device. And Sierra, we'll roll it back up to you. I'm going to do an old Johnny Carson. Hey, kind hey, of thing Jerry, real quick. I'm not going to. Yes, Phil. Is is that right? W-R-I-T-E or no. R-I-G-H-T? R-I-G-H-T. Yeah, R I G H T S P E E D, right? Speed. And you do a search wow. on that, you'll see it in many places. It's a great little they, tool. They, you mean they spelled it just like English? How about that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously they didn't go to American government schools. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, since, since she passed it back to me, I wanted to mention one real quick. I took a quick look and um, while you guys were speaking. And uh, the MyScript Nebo is also $2.99, so oh. same price. Uh, and the next tool that I wanted to talk about is really, in some ways, an extension of the same type of tool, um, also offered by MyScript. It's called the MyScript Stylus. And what MyScript Stylus does is allows you to have a secondary keyboard on your iPad that instead of typing on your on-screen keyboard, you can write in the MyScript stylus and it converts it to text and inserts it into any program on your iPad. So for example, um, I'm just gonna open up Word because Word doesn't on the iPad doesn't particularly have any sort of uh, uh, recognition or, or pen stuff like it does on some of the other platforms. And I'm opening up a blank document here and you can see my on screen keyboard came up as per usual. And I have a little thing that looks like a globe that will take me to my emojis. And if I keep pushing that, then it will take me to just what looks like a line. And that line is the MyScript keyboard. And as I write here, 
Hello. Oh, my pen came unpaired because I had to. Um, uh, I was on an airplane. Whenever ah. you turn off Bluetooth, you have to reconnect the uh, the pen. Airplanes and, can do that. We need those pins paired. We, that's the problem with the world today. Yes. Not enough pins paired. Hello. So I wrote hello there, and it scooched off the side of the screen because it automatically uh, keeps giving you more room as you're going, and it inserted hello up into my Word document. So mm -hmm. I use that means that I can be sitting there without typing at all, writing the URL to addresses inside Safari, writing anything that I would ordinarily think I would need to type, I can write using my script stylus. That keeps me from having to worry too much about any sort of keyboard. If I've got my pen out and I'm taking notes in Nebo, I can flip over to another application and keep writing using my script stylus and enter in so I don't have to be in a pen aware application at all within the iPad. This is just another keyboard that I've installed. And that keyboard is free um, oh. and also recognizes because it uses the same basic uh, underlying technology as my script Nebo, which I also checked and Nebo supports 59 languages. Oh, only so there's 59. A darn, only 59. Yeah. So there's a darn good chance that both Nebo and Stylus by my script support the languages you're looking for. <laughs> there we go. Well, 59 is pretty healthy. I think that's a, a good thing. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Well, Phil, what's yeah. your next tool that you want to share with us? Wow. So, wow, Sierra, that's <clears throat> that's a spectacular tool. I, I'm I'm definitely impressed, and it makes me almost almost want to go buy an iPad Pro. So that's uh, <laughs> that's pretty cool. So, um, so my second tip is also a video uh, tip, and that is one that you can use to send videos privately and build them into landing pages without working super hard. And that's a tool that's a little more than these. These It's a monthly subscription because it has hosted uh, video on it. And you can add hosting, uh, you know, you can add different URLs, different links to things. It's called OneMob, O-N-E-M-O-B, OneMob. And it is a spectacular tool that allows you to record from your phone or to upload a video to a landing page and then offer downloads of things with that. So if you're have a business meeting and you want to follow up with someone, instead of just sending them a regular flat email, you can show them how excited you are in a video and have them download different things on there. And the cool part is on the back end, you get a notification when they actually view it, when they click it. If they do it multiple times, you get those notifications. So you can see if someone's really interested and then you can use that for a great follow up and say, hey, sent those documents did you have a chance to look at them knowing that they had had a chance to look at them and see what questions they might have so the tool is one mob o-n-e-m-o-b like i said it's about 50 bucks a month for a subscription but it's totally worth it it'll help you close more business follow up in the business you already have and maybe even earn some referrals after going to a conference pretty slick tool that sounds very nice and you say that's 15 one five dollars a month five zero Oh, five, five zero. zero, $50 a month. Okay. Uh, that's good. It yes, sounds sir. like a lot like iJot, the E-Y-E-J-O-T that we used to have a few years ago till they went out of business. They uh, had some uh, programs that were really good. They cost a lot less than $50 a month, but they also went out of business. And so there's this uh, nasty mean thing called economics that still applies no matter what. You just can't rep repeal that supply and demand thing, even though the knuckleheads in Congress like to tr think they can. But it's just, supply and demand still is out there. Bill, that's a great tool. Yeah, and this is yeah, this is an enhancement to that, Terry. Whereas iJot was really focused on just the video, this also then offers those file downloads and the ability to connect via social or encourage people to subscribe to your YouTube channel and things like that. So it's a great follow-up tool. Even I think it's, you know, it's I take into the next. Yeah, say that again. You were breaking up there for a moment. What was that you said there? You're taking oh, it I said it's iJot to the next level. To the next level, okay. 
Very good. Well, that's a, a really good tool. And I saw a lot of benefits in using iJot. So that whole idea of technology of being able to talk to someone saying, hi, Bob, it was really good to meet you at the Woogie Woogie meeting that we went to. And it was good to do the Woogie Woogie with you. Woohoo, that was fun. And doing all that. Not that there's anything wrong with doing the Woogie Woogie. You know, it's perfectly fine. I think it's legal now in the state of Florida. So you can uh, put those things together, but giving the video really makes it come alive. You can do much more with that than you can elsewhere. Well, then the next thing I want to share with, I got my little notes down here written down, is a tool that I have been using. Some of you have heard me talk about this. It's where it's quite different than what you normally have with social media. You go into Facebook, you go into Twitter, LinkedIn. They're wonderful platforms. They're very good. But you do all the work. You're putting the content out there, and they get paid. They're the ones that have the uh, stock. They're the ones that do that. Wouldn't it be nice to find a place where you can write and you get paid? Well, there is one out there, and many of you that know me know uh, that I like to use the uh, one out there. It is called Steemit. And Steemit is the, the tool that I want to show you. Here, I'm going to bounce over here, and let's go into it. I've got uh, this, and let you see Steemit. And what it will do. Now that's spelled a little bit different. Here's one, something that kind of throws people off. It's S T E E M I T. S T two E's E E M I T dot com. And what you can do here, let me just go over to my place. I'm going to go over here to uh, what I've got on my blog in Steemit and let you see what I've got. Here, for instance, I did a uh, program yesterday talking about the change, the Bitcoin hard fork and what's coming up with that, what's uh, what it's doing, and brought in two geniuses, real experts on that, uh, like we're using uh, blue jeans here. And you'll see I've made $7.55. Not a lot, but it's something there. And here I did another one on speaking tips, $10.27 I made on that one. Here was one where I did advanced content curation tips. And on that one, $44.88. And so the point is you can use this and you can start getting paid. How do you get paid? People who are readers of this will upvote you, U-P-V-O-T-E. They upvote you so that what you do is they take some of the money that they might have when everyone starts with a little bit and it gives a few coins your way. Enough people give you some coins and you're able to start making some money. I have friends that are using this now. They've been at it a little bit longer and having worked with it for a while, making uh, five, six hundred dollars a day, thousand. I know one person making two thousand dollars a day working with Steemit, writing good content quality. And when you do that with video, with audio, with pictures particularly, it gets attention and people go, oh, I like that. I'm going to give it uh, a dollar. I'm going to give it two dollars. I'm going to give it a little bit more. And the number of uh, points that they have, the power, Steam power that they have within Steemit is how much they have. Bottom line is, it's a whole system that is devoted to helping content creators make money. Steemit uh, at steemit.com, and remember, that's with two E's, S-T-E-E-M-I-T.com, gives you a benefit on that. Now, there's no sign-up fee. You just join for free, and there's no affiliate code, any of that. You just uh, join, and when you're there, you uh, learn the protocols. I would suggest first you look at what others are doing. Get a chance to know the platform, read what's there, get a chance to see what it's like, and then make comments. As you start making comments, that's another way that you can earn money by curating, by sharing it with others, doing, clicking on a button comparable to retweeting in Twitter. You can re-steam. And when you do that, it gives extra money to that person. And if their, if their content does very well and you're one of the first people to do that, you get paid for their content also. So there's a built-in incentive to do that. So that's something I'm pretty excited about. There's uh, literally thousands of people around the world jumping on it. It's growing fast, and it's a great way for you now to get paid for all that great social media content that you're putting out there. So, Sierra, I'm going to turn it back over to you for your our, your third tip today. We've already had two real good ones there. Looking forward to a little bit more. But before you do that, please tell again those that might be joining us right now uh, midstream, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, the best way in, on Facebook is going to be through my page, thetechhappyhour.com. And for speaking engagements and consulting opportunities, sierramadro.com is going to be the, the best way. But the Tech Happy Hour is a Facebook Live series that I've been doing with a lot of tech tips, a lot like what you're seeing here. 
Um, so that's a, a good way here on Facebook through the Tech Happy Hour. Very good. And, and so what tool do you have for us as well? The final tool today. So my final tool today is going to be the hardware that makes the software work. Um, and I'm not just talking the iPad Pro, which obviously is necessary if you're going to use either of the pencil-based applications I just talked about. No, it's actually the case I use because the case I use makes it easy to do the writing on screen. When I was using the naked iPad, it's mm -hmm. actually quite, quite slick and a little bit hard to hold on to if you want to balance it to write on screen. Then I got this case from Native Union that not only holds my pencil, so it's always there and available for me, but it has this handy dandy rotating handle that will go at any angle. And what I like to do is have it just a little bit out, flip my hand through that handle, and then through this elastic band that they have right here, that gives me a very firm grip on the iPad without using any effort whatsoever. I can't drop this thing right now. There's, it's, it's attached to me, which nice. means when I have my pencil out and I'm trying to write on screen, it's very natural, very easy, and I'm, I'm not fussing with the actual pad, and I can hold it at any angle. That makes it very easy for me to use this. And then when I'm in between meetings, it also works as a nice handle so that I can carry my iPad around and Very I nice. always have it with me. So this is uh, by a company called Native Union and uh, it runs about $50. So uh, not cheap, but not that expensive either. And it will work. It has the an opening here at the top. It's a full back plastic case with an opening at the top so you can use a, um, a standard smart cover of any type, or even the keyboard cover, if you want to use that. Um, you can attach any additional type of cover on top of this. So this allows me to be that much more productive using my iPad. So most of, I know Terry and Phil both know that I run my business on my iPad. So anything that allows me to be a little bit more productive with my iPad is quite important. And that case had a remarkably transforming experience for me for my daily iPad use. It looks like it's going to be very useful. Now, just to clarify, you're using the iPad Pro, is that correct? Yes, and I still have the iPad Pro 9.5, although, oh, wouldn't I love to have the, the, the new 10-inch one. That, that looks beautiful, but I, I have the, uh, the first generation of the iPad Pro in the 9.7 size, so it uh, it works great and mm -hmm. is way faster than my five year old MacBook is. Mm, interesting. Well, now let me get a little bit more here. You're using the uh, nine point five inch, you say, iPad Pro. What does the new ten inch do that you can't do with the nine point five? Well, it's like any hardware upgrade. Um, it's going to be faster. It's got a, a new processor in it, so it's a faster processor, so you can get things done a little bit more quickly. Um, but the thing that interests me most because of what I do is it has dramatically improved front and rear facing cameras. Mm. So that means when I'm doing video using my iPad that um, I will get a higher HD quality video from both the front and rear facing cameras. That's really an important aspect for me. Um, and they use, they've also increased uh, some of the, uh, the screen brightness, so you can use it in more settings. Uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of minor tweaks as well as some major ones, but for me, the ones that are most important are around the speed and the camera. And then, oh. then we can start talking about iOS 11, which is a whole other thing. But that one's going to be coming to all of us with the the uh, uh, recent versions of the iPads and iPhones. And iOS 11 is going to be completely transformational, particularly yeah. for iPad owners. 
Yeah, that's what I was uh, hearing about, the way to split the screen, for instance, and uh, copy from one place to another. Obviously, a larger yeah. screen could be useful. One of my favorite tools is, uh, this is just an extra bonus here, my uh, iPad 4, and I use that here. i got a case on it right now, but I use this mainly for reading. So I'm using this for yes. a lot of books, and it would seem like, okay, as good as it is, and much as I love it there, it might be good to have that 10-inch screen for reading and for ma making notes and things like that. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the iPad. Phil, do you have an iPad? Are you using one of those? I think you're. I don't use it there. as much as I'd like to. Yep, but I do have one. Yep, of course yeah. it's in orange. So um, yeah, I just have <laughs> an old one actually. I got you know it, it works just fine. But I also I mostly use it uh, when I'm traveling. If I'm on an airplane and I need to write an article. Um, I use it, and I'll actually, uh, when you're ready, I'm ready to tell you how I use it to do awesome presentations. Yeah, well, matter of fact, we're, we're rolling to uh, you now for uh, that, so awesome presentation or whatever. The floor is yours, sir. Cool. So, so one of the best things about slides is the images, right? You don't. We know that bullet points kill people in PowerPoint. It just puts them to sleep and it doesn't work. So I want to encourage you to use lots of images and very little text in your presentations. And I learned that from, you know, Gar Reynolds. Um, I learned that from Seth Godin, really bad PowerPoint. I learned that from Guy Kawasaki's 10, 20, 30, Nancy Duarte, NSA's Mike Robertson, you know, Paul Border, lots of people. But here's the thing, right? I don't have time to look for the right images. Because it's licensing and it's fine. Well, you know, how do I do that? Well, I found an easy tool. It's called Haiku Deck. H-A-I-K-U-D-E-C-K. Haiku Deck. And Haiku Deck searches all the Creative Commons license photos, and it will actually automatically search based on the text of your slide. So if you put a few words, it's going to search based on those words. And you can use it on your phone. You can use it on your iPad, which is where often I like to use it. And what I'll do is I'll build it first. Like if I go down to the coffee shop, I'm going to get started on that. I'm going to think about the words that I want to say and my points, put them on, you know, put them on. So I'm going to go back to Haiku Deck and I'm going to then add them in because it'll automatically search. And this is the most important thing because we want to do this legally. It's not like going to Google image search and I, oh, Terry used that picture. So I'm going to use it too. Oh, no, no. You have to source them, so it actually does the sourcing at the end of the slide presentation for you so that it's all above board, and it puts it at the bottom as well, so it's totally legit. So Haiku Deck, H-A-I-K-U Deck, D-E-C-K, uh, it's a subscription. You can get it from, you know, if you find a coupon, you can probably find it for $10 a month, $9.99. Otherwise, kind of the rack rate is $19.99 a month. But if you do more than one presentation a month or you just have one main presentation and you put together 500 slides now, you can then swap them out with no more uh, no more subscription. And then it automatically sources the, you know, where the image is from for you. So Haiku wow. Deck is kind of my secret weapon for slides. Phil, that is really great. I like the fact that it can go out there and find what's there. And question, when you go out there, I'm sure it might, like, if, let's say you're talking about uh, Chevrolet cars, whatever. And so you say Chevrolet cars, it probably has a bazillion pictures on that, some of which might be free, some of which might have a fine. Does it give you a list saying this one's free, this one here, this one would cost this much so that you could. Uh, only the free it? ones. Okay, only the only free ones. Only the free ones. Okay, so it's only looking for free, yep. so you know you're good. And if so, someone yeah, if ever you're going to use a said, Photolia. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. If someone it has the sourcing for you, so if anyone comes back, you have that sourcing and what the licensing is and where you found the image. That's really important. Great question, Terry. Yeah, exactly. Because we can, uh, we understand as content creators ourselves, if someone takes a picture, a lot's involved to take that picture, to put the person there, to use the right equipment, to have the training and learning how to frame it, how to make sure that picture turns out well. And personally, I mean, even if it were not the law, 
I feel that that person who has taken that picture or created that content deserves to be compensated. And uh, there's many ways that they can do that. And sometimes they say, hey, I'll just give it in the common domain and it's free. That's good if they do that. But I want to make sure that I'm doing it what is not only legal, but even more so morally right. To take something from someone that is not yours is wrong. Theft is wrong and immoral. And so I like the idea of being able to have it. And for those of us, by the way, who are creating content, we'd be happy for people to use our content, maybe a, a video that we would produce and we'd want someone to use that. It would be nice to have credited to and put our name in there or for more yeah, credited to uh, Terry Brock and you can reach him here, put the website, something like that, I think would be very nice. So Phil, thank you very much for showing that. And matter of fact, Sierra and Phil, both of you have shared a lot of information today. Would you mind uh, typing up a little something, put that in either the chat or send me an email. And for those of you that are watching this, we wanna put that in the show notes for you. So you'll have that, so the, the product and then how to reach it, maybe just a quick uh, website or something like that. So we'll know where to go. So if we go, ooh, I really want to get that uh, stylus and that handle thing that uh, Sierra talked about. That looks good. They'll know where to go and get it, plus it all in one easy, easy to find place. It'd be great. Well, sure. then I have an opportunity here for the final thing that I want to share with you. And it's something that uh, I was uh, doing the tease at the front of our program about, that made billions of dollars and all that. Were you both kind of intrigued on what could this be that made billions of dollars yesterday? I actually great, already knew. Great tease, Terry. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a great tease. We, we're trying here. We're, we're going for And by the way, that is not hyperbole. Literally, and what it is, I'm going to share with you my screen. I'm going to share my screen with you and let you see where we are. Here we are. Come back over here, and let me just bounce over for a moment. Here, I was on Steam it here, so I'm going to go over to a little place that's real handy. I use a lot now called Coin Market Cap. This shows me what's going on right now, as of this very instant, with various uh, cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, of course, is number one, and look at this. Bitcoin is now worth $2,719.14. That's what you would get in U.S. dollars uh, for a Bitcoin, according to this exchange. Now, sometimes Bitcoin exchanges might have a little bit of a difference in price back and forth, but generally, that's what it is right now. And by the way, that's in contrast to even at the beginning of this year, it was 900 and some dollars. Today, 2719 What if you had taken $1,000, poured it into a Bitcoin back in December of this last year, or even uh, December 31st, that was actually the day on December 31st, you today would have, instead of the 900 some dollars, you would have 2719 But also, here's something that is brand new today. We did not see this before. Right here, we have Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin did what we call a hard fork. Now there's two. They had some challenges, some political uh, differences in, the, in different areas, and they needed to uh, do certain ap uh, applications. So what they did is they uh, made it into two different coins so that now we have Bitcoin, the traditional st uh, one that we still have. If you have Bitcoin, you still have that right here. You haven't lost anything. But in addition to that, in addition, we have Bitcoin Cash which is purported, I haven't used it yet, but faster, less transfer fees. And notice right now it is worth, as of this very moment as we're recording it, $469.24, which means if you had Bitcoins uh, that you had purchased or had earned and were in your wallet, or your wallet on the computer or on your cold storage somewhere, it would now be, you would have, not only $2,719 in Bitcoin, but also an additional $469 in Bitcoin cash. And so it's a pretty exciting time to see what's happening with cryptocurrency. It can't be stopped. I've seen throughout the years many different kinds of technologies that emerge and people poo-poo it at first. And go, oh, I don't know that. Or, oh, it's too technical. Or, oh, I can't do it. I heard that with email. I heard that with the World Wide Web when it came out. I heard that about social media. There's always the naysayers that go, oh, it, it doesn't apply, or it's not really good, it's not gonna work. Well, this is bigger than even the internet. When you look at what's happening with blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, it's a way that we can buy and sell. It's empowering people who don't have access to a bank. Over two billion people on the planet don't have a bank. They can't afford it, it's not available over there, but they can get a smartphone. And with a smartphone, they can put a wallet on here, a software app that stores 
their Bitcoin or their cryptocurrency. And then they're able to take that and purchase items with it. They can work and get paid in that cryptocurrency. Bitcoin is the largest. They can do that. Now with Bitcoin Cash, it's even faster and even easier. So I can walk into a coffee shop. I can say, hey, I'll take uh, that and that over there. I'd like those. How much is it? They say it's so much. I punch it in, go into a screen where I say, I will uh, then give you this much money. And I hold it up to them. They show me their screen and the two go woodly, woodly, or something like that. I don't know. That's a technical term, you know, woodly, woodly, or whatever they're doing. And you're transferring it from one to the other. And it's fast. It's cheap. You're, you're saving the transaction cost from the merchant's point of view. You don't have to worry about chargebacks because they don't exist. And your transfer fee is a whole lot less than you would pay as a merchant with uh, your regular Visa, MasterCard, definitely American Express. And it's international. So wherever you go on the planet, it's always the same. That 2,700 and some dollars that we talked about before, if I hop on a plane and go to Japan, there's over 200,000 stores in Japan, retail stores, that now accept Bitcoin as of a few weeks ago. We're seeing it being accepted now in countries around the world. So uh, cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin cash is my new find of the day that is brand spanking new. It is one day old as we're doing this recording. And so we're welcoming the new baby, Bitcoin cash, to our world. Uh, Phil and Sierra, are you ready to welcome uh, the new baby in town? Yeah, the bouncing baby Bitcoin. <laughs> bouncing baby Bitcoin. I like that. <laughs> that is great. Well, thank you. Now, here's what we're going to do. Before we uh, sign off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce over here to Facebook, and I want to see if we have any comments or questions from people, the wonderful folks that are watching us live, and see what's out there. Let's see. we got Mike Robertson that was stopped by. Mike, hope you're doing well. And we have Jan Reed West. Very cool. Thank you, Jan. We're glad you're here. And uh, Gina Carr. Here with lots of good stuff. Terry's uh, tip, uh, Bitcoin tip. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I see that JB Glossinger is joining us as well. JB, glad to have you here with us right now. So uh, uh, be uh, before we conclude, we've got a few more minutes here. Sierra, I'm going to turn it over to you. Any comments, any observations, questions, anything you want to talk about? The floor, the virtual floor here is yours. Uh, nothing in addition to what we've already done. I As we've We've gone through a lot today in a lot of different areas, and that's been pretty exciting. I suppose the only thing I'd say is if you want more of this, um, I do this weekly on the Tech Happy Hour. So that's a great place here on Facebook to, to continue to get some interesting tech tools and tech tips. And uh, I'll be doing one of those later this afternoon, and I run those weekly through my Facebook page, the Tech Happy Hour. Tech happy hour. Thank you. That sounds good. I'm an old radio guy that I am where I realize anybody can join us at different times throughout the hour, throughout the radio. That number again. And where is that located? Those kind of things. <laughs> so thank you. The tech happy hour on Facebook and they can bounce over there and just have oodles and goodles of fun up and down their spine. Right. Oh, yes. Or something like that. All right. And Phil, how about yourself? Any final comments, questions, observations, whatever you want. We're turning that virtual floor over to you now, sir. Oh, well, I guess my, my final comment is geology changes so fast that while this is current today, in three months, if you're to listen in, this might be different. So you're, if you want to keep your eyes on the prize, I encourage you to, you know, kind of pay attention to Sierra. You know, feel free to pay attention to me too. I'm happy to happy to help and to ask questions, you know, get involved and always ask yourself, how can this benefit my business? How might this change my business? And lastly, think about, is this something that I need to ignore? Sometimes with technology, while nothing that we shared today, I think is ignorable stuff. Sometimes you see something shiny that's you're chasing around. If you don't see a fit, it's okay to ignore it. So give your, let me give you permission and give yourself permission to ignore certain things because there's a lot of stuff that's out there that is frankly not worth paying attention to. Um, so if you want to connect, you know, and get more from me, uh, check out my company, check out Vengresso, V-E-N-G-R-E-S-O. We're Go Vengresso on Twitter and Vengresso just about everywhere else. So just search for Vengresso. Uh, I've got, you know, other co-founders that, 
that, uh, you know, they get it as well and they're super smart. So feel free, check us out and let us know how we can help you. Um, and, and interact, you know, ask questions. If you're not sure about something, ask. There's no shame in asking. Sometimes we might not know the answer. That's okay. We're going to say that. Um, but feel free to ask. Yeah, Phil, I particularly like you saying that because we're all three of us have been around technology for a while. And sometimes people think, oh, you know, all of this. Suddenly, I guess, you know, the angel, the sky opens up and the angels come down going, Lah! and we know everything. Well, it doesn't work that way. There's a whole lot of, hmm, bad government. I don't know about that one. I got to go figure that one out. And that is thrown in there. And we're trying to constantly learn, but that's part of the fun of it. We're constantly learning. And the, we, both of you know, is I'm getting more into cryptocurrencies and seeing that, holy smoke, there's like all these new words. There's all these new languages and everything. We see that all the time. So Phil, I'm going to mm -hmm. put an exclamation mark behind what you said, that things are changing fast, but we can stay with it. And one of the things I, that kind of moves into something, I just had a thought the other day I finished a book it was really good I recommend uh, by uh, about Paul Revere and it was a book about his life about uh, 300 and some pages or so really good because he did a whole lot more than just went trotting down one of the people that the British were coming he was quite an industrialist he was quite a learner in his day matter of fact while he, uh, they got the war going and they had the Lexington battle and he was there for all of these things that were happening and he was a soldier in the Revolutionary War they had a time when the Americans were having trouble getting gunpowder. Now, if you're going to go against the largest military force in the world, you need some gunpowder. And the place they got it before was from the British Empire. For some funny reason, the British didn't want to give them any more gunpowder and didn't want to sell them at all. And so they had to figure it out. So what he did, he found someone that knew how to make gunpowder. They had they like three elements that they needed. And one element was very difficult to acquire and to create. And so he went over to this person and the person didn't really want to tell him because he got a tour of it. You know, he saw it, but the guy was a loyalist. He was a, you know, somebody from uh, Massachusetts, but he was loyal to Great Britain. But he begrudgingly showed him a little bit. Paul Revere looked, what, looked at what was there. He took his brain and he figured it out and he created places around the countryside where he could create gunpowder and became a top supplier of gunpowder, mixing all the elements together for the Continental Army. And that's what we have to do. Learn how to learn fast. Figure out what's needed. Study it. Look around. Keep your eyes and ears open. Grab it and put it together as fast as you can. That's the way the world works and the technologies that we have give us the ability to do that. So uh, those of you that are joining us, really appreciate you being here. Let us know what you think. Please leave a comment. Now, by the way, this is on Facebook Live. We're going to put it in some different places around the web. But even if you see, oh, this is old, they're not live right now, we go back and we regularly like to look at it. I like to do it within 24 to 48 hours. Really make sure I'm going back there to see what's happening. I mean, we might not do it three years from now, okay? But uh, 24 to 48 hours, leave a comment, leave a question. You've got a contact information on how to get in touch with us. Oh, and for me, it's terrybrock.com. And that's spelled T-E-R-R-Y. And Brock is spelled the right way, B-R-O-C-K. So terrybrock.com. You go over there. You'll find out all about me, all the places where you can go and uh, see me on Steemit, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, email terry at terrybrock.com, et cetera. But we want to hear from you. And if you've got some questions, please let us know and we will get back to you. So Sierra and Phil, thank you both for joining us. Uh, really appreciate you being here today. And we'll look forward to seeing you two again. I think we ought to do this again sometime. Matter of fact, as we close here, one of the things we did is back uh, around uh, the, the la latter part of last year, I think it was like December 30th, 31st, we did one of these saying, hey, what's going on? Looking into the new year, what do you see happening? Well, now we're here at the beginning of August. So it's kind of a little more than halfway. And we wanted to say, here's what's going on. And we might be doing some more of these again. Those of you that are watching it, please let us know. Sierra and Phil, love you both. You're, bunch, uh, you're great buddies of mine. And I appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Love Terry. You too, buddy. Thanks, Terry. You bet. And for those of you that are joining us here by video, please, we want to hear from you. Please leave a comment below. Below, you know where that is, right in there. Just say hi, or I liked it, or I liked what you said about this or that. We want to do it. And please, please, please share this. Share this with your friends because we really want to get this information out to a lot of people around the, the interwebs and tell people about it all over the place. So for Terry, uh, this is Terry Brock on behalf of the whole crew here. Thanks for joining us, and we will look forward to seeing you a little bit later.